Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today we're going to talk about uh, HHO generator. And I have the torch running right now, it's hard to see it. It's going to light out. But um, I'm doing an unboxing and test this thing out. It's a really cool torch. And I'm afraid this thing is super hot. You can't see the flame, but um, it will burn things like crazy. So, anyway, just turn it off. Let's get going. We'll do an unboxing of this and I'll demonstrate this. Okay? Very cool, huh? Very neat device. And I have a lot of uses for this. I think I'll be doing some vacuum tubes. Maybe, maybe you can weld stuff, small stuff with it. Um, it's a little bit more powerful than I thought it was going to be. I didn't have super high up expectations because it seemed like the flow was maybe a little bit low, but it, it gets things really hot, hot enough to do some useful things. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, so the way this device works is you put water inside of it, it electrolyzes it, it puts uh, voltage across two like, uh, plates which uh, separate the you know, water's H2O, so it separates the hydrogen from the oxygen. But it uh, comes up as a gas and it puts it all together. It has a holding chamber here so that it can put out a higher flow rate than it actually is electrolyzing for a short period of time. It has a little uh, gauge up here that tells you the pressure. And uh, then that goes to our torch. Okay, there's our torch. We can use that to melt things or get things super hot, burn them, whatever. Very cool. Hydrogen flame, hydrogen oxygen flame is a very hot flame. It's a very cool device. We do a lot of fun things with this. Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today I'm going to do an unboxing of a uh, water torch. Um, it's basically an electrolysis device that splits up the water, and then you can have hydrogen and oxygen uh, burnt in the torch to give you a very high temperature. Uh, I'm planning to do some projects with this, and uh, hopefully it puts out enough gas to be uh, useful for what I want it to use. Uh, let's let's uh, take a look at what's inside this box, shall we? Okay, I ended up setting this box on the floor because it's kind of big. Let's take a look here. Okay, very exciting, huh? Wow. Okay. So it looks like here's our torch box. And uh, oh, I'm gonna need two hands to lift this thing out. Got an extension cord here. And uh, looks like there's two handles. Come off of it. Very cool, huh? Okay. Let's take a look at this guy. Oops. There's the back of it. Looks like it just got a place for the plug the plug in down there. Maybe this is where you put the water in. Okay, I'm going to have to read the directions, I guess. Very cool, huh? Looks like we've got a meter down here to measure the pressure. And what is this? An amp meter. 
water line on and off switch. Okay, very cool. Okay. Okay, so there are some things in the back of this styrofoam insert. Well, let's take a look what they are. Okay, it looks like it comes with a little torch. Okay. And a funnel here. Just stuck inside the styrofoam. For some reason this funnel is taped in there or something, I'm not sure. It's very hard to get out. Looks like it's made out of very thin, cheap plastic. And uh, it seems to be permanently deformed, maybe. This is about the same weight of plastic that you'd expect from like a pop bottle or something. Wow, oh my god. Okay. Anyway, it's got some extra support down here. The funnel part where it gets thicker, but up here it's very thin. Okay, looks like we got a little hose here and some directions. I'm gonna have to probably do something to cut this to uh, get this out of here. Okay, we'll take a look at the directions next. Very cool, huh? Okay, so inside that bag there's a plastic tube for our torch, it looks like. And oh gosh, acrylic flame polisher. And I believe what version did I get? I thought I got the bigger one. I don't know if it says on here any place. I thought I got H180, so I guess maybe that's the middle size one. Okay. And here's what the inside of the manual looks like. Danger. Okay, I'll have to read through this. Okay, so here is the uh, different parts of the device. And it looks like we got all of our things. Manual. What is that? Powder. I don't see the powder in any place. I, I ordered some powder separately. This is the big unit here. The torch, the hose, the powder. Hmm. The manual and the funnel. So let me see if I can find some powder around here. That's very interesting. Okay, I looked through all this stuff down here. Let's take a look here. And through this box. I did not see any powder in there. Fortunately, I ordered some uh, potassium hydroxide separately. I really don't see powder any place in here. Okay, well. Um, let's open up the torch and we'll take a look at that thing. Okay. Actually, first, let's just finish going through the manual. Here's the next page. They talk about adding the electrolyte to some water and not to put it in a metal container because of course the sodium hydroxide will eat it but the directions here are very um, curtailed, very short obviously from China very minimal directions but okay, check the electrical output Close torch flame become higher when it reaches its limit. 
Okay, I'll have to read through these directions a little bit more closely. And I think there's one more page. Come on. Equipment maintenance. Okay. Okay, so here's simple breakdowns and solutions. So breakdown, I guess, is the malfunction of the unit. Okay. And there we go. Let's open up the torch next. Okay, so here's the torch. And it looks like it has some kind of unscrewable head here. Screw this. I guess it's screwed up pretty tight. I'm going to need a wrench or something to undo that. It appears that there's some replacements. They got threads in there. They seem to be identical, as far as I can tell. Very small nozzle. Okay. And it looks like you have some kind of valve here that you can turn to probably change the uh, amount of flow that you have this device. Okay. And I was looking at the bottom to where you gotta hook this hose in. It looks like you gotta stuff it way up inside. Maybe this comes apart or something. Yeah, I think this comes apart. So maybe you just put this handle on afterwards because it would be impossible to fit that hose up inside of there like that. So I'll just There we go, there's the hose fitting. So I guess that goes right on our hose here. And I think it's got some kind of thing where you can screw it down and tighten it up. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, oh, there we go. It looks like this hose will fit into there possibly. Light it up or something. Doesn't seem like it's fitting on very well. Let's see, maybe I'll thread this guy on here first. So he's on there. And try to get this hose in here. Wow. I mean I gotta unscrew this all the way and put the hose on and screw it back on. Let's try that. Oh. So I'll get this threaded onto the tube like so. And I'll put the hose on it like that. And then I will screw this guy back on here up tight. And then I'll screw this guy back on. And I think we might have our torch all good to go now. Okay. I assume. Let's take a look here. Looks like this thing has an output similar to this side, so I guess I'll do the same protocol. Screw this thing off. Put the hose through it. Oh my gosh, this is tightened on pretty tight. Okay. We'll get this over the hose like the other one. that guy on there. Make sure he's on tight. I'm gonna screw this guy on. I think we might be almost ready to go. I have to finally make some water solution. And it goes into the gas tank in here, I guess. Don't ask me what happens if you need to replace the electrodes. Maybe you have to tear this whole thing apart. Okay, that funnel fits in there very nicely. And uh, I guess I'll have to read the directions on how to uh, 
mix up the solution. Very cool, huh? There we go. Okay, so for the first step, it says 15% uh, solution, which means uh, 15 grams of sodium hydroxide per 100 milliliters. But it looks like they're telling us we have the H180 here. We need one liter. So that's one liter is 10 times the amount. You know, 100 milliliters times 10 is uh, 1,000 milliliters or one liter. And so, uh, I guess instead of 15 grams, we would need 150 grams in one liter of uh, water to uh, put inside of our machine here. Okay. And here, the second part of the instructions is kind of baffling me, as they're saying that this thing in the front is a filter, and you're supposed to put alcohol in it or distilled water possibly and uh, but they don't tell what kind of alcohol add alcohol to the about one third full the filter solution is distilled water or alcohol okay very interesting if you can put distilled water in there maybe I will use that instead hmm not sure why they give you the choice or choose to put something flammable in there like alcohol. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Well, let's give this a shot, I guess. Okay, let's take a look at this. I think this is probably potassium hydroxide. And if you study chemistry, there should be. I guess in principle, very little difference between sodium hydroxide, which is drain cleaner. You get that from Home Depot. And I don't know, this is what they recommended to go along with our special device here. Oh, come on. Stop moving around. I mean, let's just check this out. Okay, look at this. It's a box inside of a box. Okay. And there we go. Essential Depot. Please tell me, yeah, see it says potassium hydroxide. Okay, even though the Chinese directions for our machine say sodium hydroxide, basically the same thing. Oh, there we go, look at that. Keep out of the reach of children. Okay, so let's, um, try to measure some of this stuff out on a, I got a scales here and we will try to um, measure this out and uh, get the machine running hopefully very cool okay so here we go we have our scales here and our sodium hydroxide and I have some whey paper and it's just a piece of paper junk mail actually I got so it's got a double purpose now and I just fold it in half and we'll just stick it on top of the scales like so. And then we can pour our chemicals onto this. And uh, let me show you a little trick if you're not familiar with chemical scales. Okay, so here's our scales. And we'll put the whey paper on there. And that's just something so you can put the chemicals on this thing, this piece of paper. And... Uh, Measure them out and then you can dump them where you want to dump them without getting them all over the place or 
You don't want to contaminate the top of the scale. Yeah, it's just been through a world war. Huh? Anyway, so it looks like the whey paper weighs about 9 grams, and you don't want to um, have that, you know, mess with your, your weight, interfere with your weight. So rather than having this to subtract that off or, or add that much more, we can hit tear, and that re-zeroes the scale to zero. And remember, uh, we need one liter, and we estimated to get a 15% solution. We need to add about 150 grams. Okay, so that seems like a lot, doesn't it? Hundred fifty grams seems like a whole lot. Oh my gosh. Look at this. We're only at thirteen. Fifteen. Oops. Now this stuff is really caustic. It will burn you, so you shouldn't do like what I do. You pick it up with your fingers. Okay. So we're at twenty grams. Is that really? 150, wow. I hope I did my calculations right. Not even a third of the way there yet. And the other thing that I mentioned, the directions, you gotta wait till the water cools down, because when you put this much lye, or sodium hydroxide, or potassium hydroxide, or whatever, into water, it's gonna get really really hot wow we're approaching halfway and I'm not sure if my way paper is going to support all this 80 yeah it's starting to fall off the mound here Jeez. Usually just a single fold in the middle will stop it. I'm going to refold this. I need two hands for that. Wow. That's only at 90 right now. Okay. I just kept on adding. Let's film the last of this, I guess. We're getting close. Oh, there we go. Close enough. 151, whatever. I mean, 15% is approximate for that. Jeez, that is a whole mound of uh, potassium hydroxide. Wow. Now I gotta get something to measure out the um, uh, the water and something to mix it in, maybe. Because this stuff is gonna be something else. Okay. okay, so I need a big container that's not metal to mix this stuff in. And I have these giant jars that I got for canning and storing stuff for the coming holocaust from the communist takeover of America. And, um, look at this. See that? I don't know if that's in focus. Where is it? 1,000 milliliters. So that's one liter. So I'm going to fill up this jar. I probably want to take off the top because, uh, Sodium hydroxide, or in this case, potassium hydroxide, is very caustic to metals. Um, <clears throat> so let's just uh, fill this jar up and uh, we can. Uh, I think I'm just going to use tap water here. Okay. I'm going to fill it up to. 100 milliliters, or 1,000 milliliters, or 1 liter, and then we will uh, stick our potassium hydroxide in there and see how that works out. Okay, get that close. Let's see. Uh, maybe a little bit over. Let's dump a little bit out. Okay. How does that look? Pretty close to 1,000 milliliters. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. 
think we're close to a thousand there. And let's try putting our sodium hydroxide into the water. Okay. I might need two hands for this, but let's take a look. Okay, so here I have a plastic spoon, and I, this stuff is really caustic, so you probably don't want to use a metallic spoon. And let's just try sticking a little bit in here and see what happens. I think it takes a little while. Oh, there we go. You hear that? It produces a heat reaction when you stick this stuff in there. I'd have to shovel this in slowly, probably. So I don't crack the container because it will get super, super hot. Okay. Yeah, I hear it. There we go. See, these yellow things are starting to melt. I think it's due to the humidity. Starting to get water. Let's just show, keep on shoveling this stuff in. Yeah, I think we've angered the gods. Yeah. Careful not to spill this on the table. Now I think that we only have to do this once because the sodium hydroxide, remember, should always stay in the water, you know, in the machine. They did recommend that when it turns brown or something that uh, you should replace it, and I'm not sure how to do that. Probably have to take the machine apart or something. Let's just feel this to see how hot this is getting. Not too bad yet. Let's keep on adding this. We'll see how this goes. Okay, well, I'm just feeling this, feeling the bottom. The bottom's kind of getting super hot. I hope it doesn't crack the glass. Let me try to mix it up a little bit. And I got about half of this stuff in there already, and it is it's really hot on the bottom. Okay. And, uh, oh, you should probably wear, like, um, safety goggles with this, because if it gets in your eyes, it'll probably blind you. You never know, this stuff could, <laughs> never know what it's going to do when it's producing a lot of energy like this. Anyway, I'm going to, maybe I should stir that up a little bit. I don't want to use the spoon, though, because I'm going to, let see if I can find something else. Okay, let's try this. Try stirring this up so it doesn't crack the bottom or something. I'm getting too hot down there. Okay. Remember, this stuff is super, super corrosive. It will burn your fingers chemically. And well, I guess let's keep on adding more of this potassium hydroxide to the solution and see what happens. Okay. Okay, anyway, this container is, I've added the rest of that stuff. If you look here, it was starting to burn the paper, turn it yellow. <laughs> yeah, this stuff is incredible. And this jar is at the bottom, it's about too hot to touch. Let's just stir this up a little bit more. Make sure
sure it's all dissolved and they said wait until it cools off before you stick it in the machine. Like I said, you probably want to wear safety goggles when you do this because you don't want this stuff in your eyes, that's for sure. Okay. And I think I might throw all this stuff away because it has been contaminated with sodium hydroxide and I don't feel like cleaning it up. Okay. Very cool, huh? Okay, so here we have our HHO generator, and here is our uh, potassium hydroxide solution. And let's get this ready to uh, put into our generator. So here's our generator here, and I believe we'll stick the fluid in there. I'm going to clear all this other stuff off the top so it doesn't get by this sodium or potassium hydroxide here and let's see where is our funnel funnel in and let's try pouring this fluid in and again I do recommend using safety goggles when you do this because this stuff will burn your eyes out if you splash it in your eyes okay okay there we go Yikes. Do not spill this stuff. Okay. Okay, and I just finished pouring that in there. And, um, <clears throat> oh. I mean, I don't know what to do with that. I'm going to clean that up in a second. We'll put the top back on here. And again, the directions recommended. This is a, what they call the filter here. Let's see if I can pull this thing off. Okay. And they recommended filling this about one third of the way full with uh, alcohol or distilled water. And I have a reverse osmosis machine, which I did a video on. I really like this thing. Maybe we'll just fill it up with this because. Reverse osmosis is basically uh, as clean as distilled water, and I don't feel like dealing with alcohol. They didn't tell you what kind of alcohol or what percentage to use or anything else. So, okay, well, that's all in Chinese. <clears throat> now let's see how this works. I guess maybe the alcohol, I saw some things online, I couldn't find anyone really talking about it, but you know, if you put alcohol in there, it'll prevent it from freezing, or distilled water could freeze and break something in principle, right? Okay, and look, we can see here, maybe I'll turn on the light, there's a water line there. So it says normal water line and feed water line. Okay, so it tells you the water level inside there. And it looks like we could add a little bit more water because it's not fully up to the top. But um, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, I'm curious to see how this thing works. Let me uh, make sure the torch is closed off. Okay. And uh, here's our extension cord. Let me undo the twist tie here. And it looks like it is a normal computer cord. I have about a bazillion of those around here. And let's just plug that in there. I guess we will straighten this cord out and yeah, plug her into the wall. Let's 
see what happens. Okay, so this thing is off right now. Let's try turning her on and see what happens. Okay, so it's drawing about 15 amps. Sounds like the fan on the back started up. And here's our pressure gauge, and look at that, our pressure gauge is going up. Very cool, huh? So it's increasing in pressure here. It's supposed to automatically shut off once it gets up to pressure. Let's let this thing run for a little bit, and then we'll give her a test. Oh, let's see, there we go. Looks like it shut off. And here's our torch. Okay, so the pressure goes down when I start letting the gas out. And supposedly when it gets too low, it will turn back on. Very cool. Okay, let's try, let's see, let's see if we can do this. Here's our torch. I thought I'd run a lighter someplace. Okay, here's a lighter. Oh boy. Fire is always so much fun, right? I wonder if I can get a broader view here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think the flame is lit. It's really, really hard to see them. But it is definitely lit. Maybe it blew out. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I can see that it's lit. I'm not sure what to stick in that flame though, because it will probably burn it. Yeah, see, it's got that plastic in there, it's burning the plastic. <laughs> like nobody's business. It's hard to see that flame though, it is very, very clear. If I turn off the lights, I turn off the light on my camera here. Oh, look at that. Very cool. We got our hydrogen torch working. I'm afraid I'm going to burn something with it. Wow. Very, very cool. We'll have to check, check, test this out on something. Okay, I'll turn it down. Okay. And uh, we are off. There we go. And this thing is working pretty good. Okay. Okay, let's give this torch a little test. Let's bring this over here. And uh, let's see. Where is our. Okay, I guess our camera's on this side. Okay. So let's. Um, Turn this guy on. Get it up to pressure. Okay, and you, I don't know if you can see that, but it is lit. And I've been doing some glass blowing because I want to um, basically uh, build vacuum tubes. And I just wanted to see if it is possible to melt glass with this torch because I wanted to do some fine glass work. Joining the pieces together. And there we go.
probably get a close-up look at it from a different angle. Okay, look at that. It was open on the one side just like that, and I just melted it all the way shut. Very cool, huh? So this might be great for uh, doing some of my vacuum tube work. And I'll probably make some videos on vacuum tubes as well. Um, I should try it on metal also. Be interesting to see how that works, huh? Okay. So here we have a steel wire. Let me clip it like this. Because I don't want to burn my fingers. And we got our torch here. I'll try lighting that thing up again. I think it's going. Can you see that? Let's turn off the lights. Yeah, okay. And here's our steel wire. Let's just see if we can heat this thing up. I bet we can. Holy cow, look at that. Turn the torch up a little bit so I can adjust this knob here. Bring the flame up a little bit. it. I bet you could uh, weld two pieces of steel together like that if you uh, were handy with gas welding. Very cool. That's a very neat contraption. Okay. Okay, just out of curiosity, I saw some reviews online and uh, they tried to do some welding with it but they kind of failed but you know, maybe it takes a little bit of practice or something. I'm just wondering if I can weld a couple things together, like so. Let me just bend this uh, piece of wire into a loop. We'll see if we can weld the two ends of it together. Let's put them right close to each other, like so. Let me just see if I can grab this with this guy like that. And uh, see if I can get this torch lit. Turn this thing back on. And I get the Okay, so it looks like we're good to go here. Let me get this guy over top of the cardboard. And we will see if we can just weld these two things together. I have never done welding before, so... You know, that probably takes certain practice or technique to do this. Let's see if we can heat these up and melt them together. Maybe you need a 
certain flux or something, I don't know. It's like burning the cardboard way across there. Oops, I think our torch went out. not what I meant to do. <laughs> I guess that flame reaches out a ways. Uh, wow. Let me put that out. Careful with these torches, I guess. That flame reaches out a long ways. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, so we cannot angle it down at all. That flame is like a lightsaber, it just definitely expands out. Okay. Take a look at that. Looks like maybe it's melted together. I don't know. I'll have to wait for it to cool because it's probably super hot right now. Let's we'll see if we can pull that thing apart. Very cool, huh? Might be a good weld. Okay, let's, let's just go ahead and try sticking it under some water. Nothing cools off steel like a little bit of water. Water has a huge amount of thermal mass and it can really pull heat out of stuff. Okay. Maybe that's good. Okay. 
Oh, well, looks like the weld broke apart. Anyway, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not an expert welder, so maybe I need some flux, maybe I need some more talent than I have, but uh, it kind of looked like it was going to stick together maybe, anyway, very cool, huh? Okay, so I have a test tube here, and let's see if we can uh, blow a hole in the bottom of it using our torch and our, well, let's see, our HHO generator. Got it all here, and uh, let's get this thing started. Okay, very cool. Okay, we got the uh, pressure all up on our device. Usually I have to light it at a fairly low flow rate to make sure it gets lit. And oh, there we go. Okay. And here is our tube. And let's try to see if we can get a better look at this. Okay. Oops, I grabbed the wrong tube. Let's try doing this one. It's blowing like hot air right at me. Okay. So we can just melt the center of that. Torch. Ooh, it's like blowing hot air all the way down here. Holy cow. that. It blew out the center already with the torch. It's super fast. Holy cow. See that? Let's turn the torch off. Okay. There. I got the uh, center blown out of our glass now. Very nice. Well, it's not quite in the center, but it's pretty close. Um, very cool. Wow, this torch works great for glass blowing. Okay. Okay, so here's the tube that I want to join to that test tube. Let's take a look here. And uh, I'm going to put a flange on this one so I can put these together. Let's get our torch going. Okay, there we go. And so we will start heating up the end here, like so. Let's see if we can start um, deforming this. That into a flange. Ooh, did it break? Oh, come on. Okay, one thing I've been liking to do, this is a tungsten rod for welding. If I stick it up 
through the center there. You can have, sometimes the hole will close off if you're working with the glass and trying to melt the things together. This will kind of prevent that from happening. And uh, let's see if we can weld these two things together like so. Okay. Get this torch going again. Huh? Our torch is going, and I get our two pieces lined up like so. Let's see if we can fuse these two things together. I should heat up both sides. Get that side heated up. This side heated up. Let's see if we can fuse these two things together. Okay, let's take a look at that. Wow, pretty nice weld, I think. Let's turn off the torch and uh, probably work with it a little bit more to make sure that um, this is melted good. Take a good look at that. Okay. Ooh. Of course, you gotta oh, let it cool down slowly or it's gonna break, right? Remelt that because it cracked. Okay. Let me work on that for a second. Anyway, very cool device. I'll uh, be posting links for this uh, at the end of the video or in the description. If you order through there, uh, all this helps on my website. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, I'll be probably making some more videos on this because I want to do some projects with this, that's why I get these devices. Uh, very cool, very cool science. Water, and uh, breaks, breaks up to uh, hydrogen and oxygen, and then when it recombines, it gives off a tremendous amount of heat. So it's a very hot flame, super hot flame. Anyway, so you can melt a lot of stuff, burn a lot of stuff if you don't be careful. Uh, lots of fun. This is Dr. James, and thanks for watching.